Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. The year is 2021. Let's talk trading. FOMC. Maybe I should have had everything in green since it's St. Patrick's Day. And just so you know, even on St. Patrick's Day, these videos are for educational purposes only, and your results may differ from mine. FOMC. It's like, uh, it's a big day today. Um, you know, it's the Federal Reserve. And um, it looks like uh, they're not going to see any rate hikes. So um, that means the dollar's getting killed. So uh, the other pairs, or other currencies seem to be going up in uh, comparison to the dollar. So let's just take a look at this. Um, I don't know if you traded this or not. Um, I'm kicking myself. I was long the pound around 38.70 or something, and I had my TP set at 90, and I punched out at 75 and left a bunch of pips on the table. <laughs> but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you need to just leave things alone, walk away. You set your plan, and you should just... Leave it alone. But sometimes I uh, just get the better of myself. And you can see here, two pairs haven't filled the, their open gaps yet. And in the meantime, we've got the uh, pound is 18 pips over the weekly open at the moment. And it's uh, going back and forth. And you can see here, we went across the uh, monthly open at 39.27. We're still in the uh, range, opening range for the week here, and we're in the opening range for the month. So a lot of action for these around these horizontal lines at the moment. Um, 289 pips above the yearly open. And we had a uh, the inside bar high here from seven days ago. 38, call it 65, 38.65. You see we dip below it, went above it. Interesting. On an FOMC day, only two pairs over 100. And uh, with the pound clocking in right now at 84 pips of range. You can see it broke out of yesterday's high here at looks like 39.05. And we're 25 pips above that level. So once again, simple trades at horizontal lines. A uh, huge candle here on the uh, H1. Huge candle. In fact, that's pretty much most of the day's range right there. <laughs> All except this little bit here. <laughs> that's the day's range. Uh, Walmart and I like to call that coast to coast. And you can see here what the uh, green rats are getting ready to feast. It looks like. Don't know where, you know, if this hits the 40, the first launch pad, it could go from the 40 to the 60. So uh, be careful, uh, you red rats at the moment. And... We took out the uh, daily pivot, no problem. We had already taken out the weekly pivot, and we've taken out the monthly pivot. Put that back. Wick zone in and out, shot through at 91, then shot through again at 39.05. You horizontal line traders were paid off once again. As usual, no squiggly lines were harmed in the making of my videos. <laughs> uh, Walmart traders here, uh, 3860 was your trigger line. Um, I hope some of you uh, got that trade. Sometimes, you know, if you, if you listen to uh, some of the people out there, traders, teachers, instructors, gurus, whatever you want to call them, they tell you, you know, you shouldn't trade the news. Don't trade the news, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> news is simple breakout. You uh, put your uh, your orders 
above and below price, price hits it, you make some profit, you slam out. That's why I, I took my pips real quick because it stalled and I knew it could go against me, but it didn't. It just kept running and running, but that's okay. That's what happens sometimes. There'll be other trades. Once again, Walmart traders here looking at M5 were, were rewarded with that news spike. And price just seems to be steadily rising at the moment. Usually after news, it'll probably come back down because, you know, this 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 is just usually an overreaction. They're going to want to clear these orders out and then they'll do what they do. But you never know. Price may never see this level for another year or two. That's possible. And here we're hitting that 40. That that launch pad area. So price could launch. As you can see, we're near the uh, daily H4 and um, H1 highs, which are all the same at the moment. And we still have, uh, let's see, in the hour, I switched this over to a one hour chart. We got 17 minutes left in the hour. You, and you know, looking left right here, you see there was a little bit of problem here, but we're in the 40 zone. So looking for price maybe to go to 60, maybe to go to 1.40. I think Walmart had called that out um, earlier in the week. Because one thing I like to do is when wherever price is, I like to think, is it more likely to go to the next double O above or the next double O below. What's price most likely to do? And you can see here price is moving up. And if it breaks, I guess what's that? 49. It will uh it probably will land up in the 60s. Maybe even touch that 1400. We're just going to have to wait and see. Make because that's all we can do. We can't make anything else happen. So wait and see. Taking that 40 crossover would have paid off. But I think I'm pretty much done trading for the day. But I thought I would make this video for the people out there and traders out there. I'm trying to think if there's any questions. Oh, yeah. Um, some people want more alerts on indicators. I may have already talked about that, but um, I don't like putting alerts on indicators. I mean, if you're trading, you should be there to trade. Some people go, yeah, but I want it to alert me to an opportunity. But then it's like, well, if you already know where the opportunity is going to be, then have your pending order sitting there. Um, it's just kind of funny how... Uh, you know, people want what they want. And, you know, I might I might go ahead and put some alerts on some of the indicators they ask for. It's just, um, I just don't really like to have alerts. I'd rather, if I'm going to be there, I'll look at the dashboard. And, you know, sometimes you'll see I'll have that pop up when it's hitting the H1, but that was just built into the indicator years ago. Um, but I'm sitting here watching it. I don't need the indicator to tell me. Plus, the other thing, with those pop-ups, they pop up. You got to clear them out before you can make your move. And and basically, they can slow you down or, or actually cause you to miss a move um, if they pop up at the wrong time. It's just really bad. Just like sometimes windows will have a pop-up and it'll get in the way of a trade. I don't know if you've ever had that happen or not, but uh, I've got dual monitors here. I've got my laptop monitor and this other monitor plugged into the laptop so I have my trading screen on that on the one that's not on the laptop so all that um, mess from uh, Microsoft Windows um, 
that'll happen on the uh, laptop monitor and not get in the way of my trading monitor. And monitors are, you know, under a hundred bucks. They're so cheap. Um, you know, there's almost no reason not to have one. And I guess they even have some portable ones that you can take with you, put in your uh, computer bag. Anyway, we've got about five more minutes. Um, now, I think somebody was asking me something. Oh, they wanted me to change something in the sweet spots indicator. And it's just like, no, I, I don't think I'm going to get around to to doing that. So, and people have some uh, interesting ideas. Let me just say it that way. But the question is, is that idea going to make you any money? I mean, you know, is it something that you've run statistics, you can prove it? Or is it just something you just want because you want it or you just thought of it? I mean, I, I think of indicators a lot of the times I build stuff and some of the stuff, you know, after I build it, it's like, nah, that doesn't really work the way I want it. That's not going to make me any money. So it just doesn't see the light of day. And I'm, it's kind of interesting watching price here in the launch pad. We've got, oh, uh, what, 12 minutes left. We'll just have to wait and see if it can crack that 50 and continue or if it's going to come back down to the 3900 level. And you can see what price has done, you know, once again, looking left, up and down, up and down, and then down, and now up. So probably it might just come right back down or it could just go up to this level. It's, it's a wait and see. Right now, statistics are uh, on the side of shorting. <laughs> we've got the, we were in the rat zone. Um, one thing, though, we we still don't have the range, so that's might cause you not to want to take a reversal. Because you have to look for reasons not to um, trade in a certain direction. So a lot of times you can do paralysis of analysis and you'll never trade because you'll always find a reason not to trade that way, either long or short. So once again, looking left, and my computer's running a little slow right now. It's mainly the internet. You can see here price failed to close above the 40, See, it closed above it once here, but it failed a few times. So maybe taking that short around 40 right now would have paid off. But, you know, once again, you just look to the left and you take your chances. There's no guarantees here in trading. There really isn't. But some traders are still looking for that mystical, <laughs> I don't know what exactly um, they're, they're looking for. But as I tell some people, it's like, you know, if you want to learn how to swim, you're going to get wet. So, you know, if you're going to learn how to trade, you got to put skin in the game. You can demo. It's demo is for learning the new platform where the buttons are. So when you buy... You, when you really want to buy, you click buy, and when you really want to sell, you click sell, and you don't make those kind of mistakes. You're familiar with all the orders and the reports. That's what demo's for. But when it's time to uh, actually start trading and learning to trade, even if it's only a dime a pip or a penny a pip, you got to get some skin in the game. You just have to. Otherwise, your heart doesn't start pumping. You won't know what it's like to trade. And once again, just a quick scan of the ranges, 97, 56 percentile. The last three days right now, 97 pips. That's interesting. So, fellow traders, I hope you're having a profitable month, week, and I hope you had a profitable FOMC day and have a really safe and fun St. Patrick's Day. And remember, when you come back to your trading platform, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.